Hello again, and how are we all? Okay, so it's been about two months since my last book review. Sorry, I was meant to um, do one not long after I did the one for Hell's Aquarium, but um, due to a couple of things in my personal life, they've been pushed back a little bit. Anyway, enough about that. So, here I am, finally, and the book I'm going to review today is... The Rosie Project by Graham Simpson. The Rosie Project. Released in April 2013, The Rosie Project is the first novel by Graham Simpson, who previously has written two books and several papers about data modeling. The Rosie Project revolves around a 39 year old geneticist called Don Tillman, who wants to find himself a wife. The book begins with Don covering a lecture about Asperger's for Jean Barrow, the head of the psychology department at Melbourne University, and is also Don's best friend and colleague. After using two lunch breaks over the past couple of days to cram in some research on autistic spectrum disorders and preparing his presentation, which is due for at 7pm at a school, to which he arrives at 6.15. D 7 p.m., allowing himself three minutes to set up the equipment in the hall where he meets Julie, the convener for the lecture, who makes small talk while Don focuses on preparing everything, not wanting to waste any time. While his attention is on the task at hand, Don doesn't see the audience for the presentation enter and take their seats. Julie then asks about Jean, who Don reveals is out on a date instead of being ill, as he told Julie. And 18 minutes later than planned, Don begins his talk, which focuses on the genetic aspects of the condition, and even uses a scenario where a lack of emotion could be an asset, where they are hiding from enemies but a crying baby is giving out their location, but they also have a gun. The audience, which in this case are children, give suggestions such as ambushing the enemy or even shooting the baby, while everyone else is stunned at the idea, and this prompts an early end to the lecture. And while Don is packing up, Julie asks if he could join her for a drink, but Don turns her down having got things back on schedule and says he has other activities scheduled for that night. Two days later, Don gets a call from Julie, who asks him a question about a point he made during the lecture, where he mentioned a company in Denmark that employed people with Asperger's for computer applications testing. The question she asks is about how candidates are found, because as she puts it, most adults with Asperger's don't even know they have it. Don makes a preliminary guess that they use a questionnaire as a filter, which gives him an idea. Design a detailed and strict questionnaire that filters out any unpromising candidates. Women who are unpunctual, overweight, vegetarian, those who drink or smoke or have STDs. With this measure now in place, Don hangs up on Julie and embarks on his now dubbed wife project and hopes to find his ideal partner and avoid mistakes like his past attempts at finding a partner. Now, the subject of autism has been used in fiction before, with the best example being The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon from 2003, where the story revolves around a 15-year-old boy with Asperger's looking into a murder of a neighbor's dog with a pitchfork, whereas Graham Simpson's first novel explores how the condition affects an undiagnosed adult and how he approaches a romantic situation and every day in general. The irony is, where everyone else can see this variant in Don, he can't see it in himself, 
whereas he can see it in other people such as Laszlo, a colleague of his at Melbourne University. This itself creates some degree of confusion in readers due to Don regularly describing the stock features of Asperger's in reference to himself. I am not good with nonverbal communication, unlike many people I am very comfortable with repetition. The story is presented in a mix of past tense and present tense, with Don himself providing the narration, which is pitch perfect while also being precise and formal with a geeky tone that perfectly encapsulates his rigidly scheduled and rationally detached world view. Throughout the book, we get to know Don and his routines the very efficient standardized meal system, as he devises his questionnaire to seek the perfect wife. Then Rosie enters the story and it begins to drift off in another direction, where we see Don break away, rather reluctantly, from his structured and organized lifestyle into new expanses that he's never experienced before, and he also learns that life and love don't adhere to logical thought and planning. The relationship between Don and Rosie is primarily based on Rosie's search for her real father, as her mother never revealed his identity before she died when Rosie was a child. And Don, with his expertise as a professor of genetics, is the perfect person to help her out. Initially, there is some confusion between the two, with Don mistaking Rosie as a candidate for his wife project, and Rosie thinking Don is helping her because he has an interest in her. Even when this is cleared up later on, they both continue with the father project, which puts the two in an entertaining series of comic set pieces and occasionally some life-threatening situations. And despite their seemingly justified approach to being in each other's company, a relationship begins to form. However, I do have a couple of minor issues with the book, and they go like this. Okay, the first is a slight misrepresentation of those on the, aut on the autism spectrum. The assumptions presented here about people with autism is that they all possess some kind of extraordinary mental capabilities, when in reality only a small minority of the group with the condition have some kind of mental advantage, shall we say, and the majority of autistic people actually have some form of learning disability. This makes for an almost cliché view of the condition, which unfortunately is shared with other books that also touch on the subject of autism. Okay, and my other problem with this is the ending. The final act of the book has a more brisk pace compared to the rest of the book, which can partly disrupt the flow and build-up. With some readers, they may feel like it was rushed. However, despite these issues, I immensely enjoyed The Rosie Project, with its originality, quirkiness, wit, its interesting and well-defined characters, the plot twists, and the overall setting. I also found it to be very warm-hearted and perfectly pitched. At its core, The Rosie Project is a classic, feel-good, screwball romantic comedy, with possibly the oddest of couples, which kind of proves that love comes from the unexpected, and you don't find it it finds you. Overall, my thoughts on The Rosie Project are it's a very well-written, well-researched, engaging, charming, affectionate, and a very intelligent novel, with plenty of flavour with its being set mostly in Melbourne, and it makes for a very enjoyable read. I also felt a kind of understanding with the protagonist, Don, because I have Asperger's myself, only not as far up the spectrum as Don is, and personally I find it endearing to have a character like him in the public consciousness, because I feel that there's not enough characters that kind of represent autistic people in various types of media. And for that alone, it makes a very refreshing change, and for that reason, The Rosie Project holds a special place in my library as well as my personal top three. The Rosie Project is available in paperback, hardback, ebook, audiobook, audio CD, and CD ROM. The sequel, titled The Rosie Effect, is set for release later this month. Um, I managed to get my copy a little early, thanks to Waterstones. I actually got it last Thursday, but I had to wait until yesterday to get it because that's when I got paid. <laughs> But anyway, I'll be starting to give this a read as soon as I upload this review.
And there we have it, my review on Graham Simpson's first novel, The Rosie Project. Okay, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.